Balance timing, my love. Alright guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are Balm Feed and we're continuing on with our Walt syllabus doing the balance steps. Let's get right into it. Leaders footwork for these balance steps. I'm going forward on my left foot again, but here instead of doing a box step, I'm going forward and I'm collecting my feet and pausing here, and then going back on my right foot, collecting my feet and holding, side on my left foot as I collect, and then side on my right foot as I collect as well. So obviously the biggest difference here so far is that I take a forward step, my right foot literally collects all the way underneath, which it really doesn't even do in a box. And I do the same thing going back, collecting fully underneath, side of my left foot, side of my right foot. My knees are soft the whole time, so I feel like I have a little more balance if I'm too stiff about this. It feels kind of funny and awkward. And my feet definitely collect all the way underneath myself every single time, even on the forward, even on the side steps itself. My timing for this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, ladies, now your footwork for the balance steps. So we are starting with the right foot back, taking one step, and then we're gonna collect the free leg, but we're not gonna put too much weight on it, so we're not gonna switch our feet this time, okay? So this is different than our box steps, change steps, etc. where we do collect the feet and brush them together, but we're not changing weight, okay? Not right away. So, that being said, we take one step back on the right foot, brushing in the left, one, one step forward on the left foot, brushing with the right, then we go to the side with the right, brushing together with the left, and then side with the left, brushing together with the right. So we're just collecting the feet, brushing them in and underneath our body. We don't wanna leave it back and kind of have our spine halfway through, but we don't wanna close our feet and change our weight like our box step if we bring our feet together, okay? So let's do that again. We go back, forward, side, and side. And we wanna keep the soft knees, like Chris said, that way it's not too stiff like a robot and uncomfortable on the body as well. So with some timing, we start going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So a little bit different, we're not stepping on every beat like we did in the previous steps. We're gonna take one step and then we're gonna collect for two, three, one step, collect for two, three. The balance step, we're gonna go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, key points for these balance steps. So the most important thing now, leading and following this, what my lead is, is I take this first step, I really stay soft in my left knee so I'm grounded, so I can keep her here, because she's expecting to go take a side step. Very realistically, she's probably gonna start taking the side step and I have to maintain my frame on the right side so she doesn't go to take this, she's not physically capable of taking this step because I kind of keep her in here and collect my legs and keep my own balance and be as sturdy as possible because she's expecting to take a side step. So I go forward and ground myself and then as soon as she stays here, I can kind of breathe the leg and it's fine. And I go backwards because she knows we're in this pattern now. So going side to side, it's very, very easy as long as I collect my feet the entire time. So for us, this can be a tricky uh, follow just because it's a change of rhythm for us for the first time in the waltz. So um, a tip I have is for the leaders as well. I mean, more for the leaders just because they're the one who's initiating the pattern, but it's good to know for the followers as well. When we're taking that first step, so when he goes forward, if he goes forward and collects right away, on the first step and then just has to hold dead weight with the last two, it's gonna be much harder to keep her than actually going through it a little bit slower and brushing that leg and using all of that time and the music that you have to actually brush and collect instead of just going one, two, three, one, two, three. It's also harder to stand, stand still with the music. You'll feel bored or like you don't have anything to do when you can actually just use that time to breathe and collect the foot and required to collect the foot instead of going 
and pausing here and then trying to come back again. Because you might think you're trying to hold her up again, but it really just looks ridiculous and feels ridiculous. Everything collects underneath itself every single time on all of these steps. I don't technically have to do all four of these together. I could just go forward back or just side to side. So I could just go one, two, three, one, two, three, and go back again into my box step. I could just go one, two, three, one, two, three, and go back again to my box step. If you guys are getting very comfortable leading and follow each other, this is an interesting drill to kind of go back and forth with. Definitely recommend starting with the version we have and keep it consistent for a while until, like he said, you get super comfortable with one another. Mm -hmm. So this particular step is a great, I call it a thinking step for leaders. So this gives you a lot of time to think and prepare what you want to do next. Or if you're in a trouble spot, maybe if you have a crowded dance floor, this gives you a lot of time to kind of stay in one spot, wait for something maybe to clear if there's a blockage, and it just gives you time to think, okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to do the underarm turn now. Okay, great. Now I'm ready to do it. Now I'm ready to lead it. So more for the leaders for thinking, followers, we're just, we're following. This very simple step actually serves a few different purposes, like she just said, and you can also think of it as like an emergency step. She just said that if somebody's in my way, I can go right to the side and kind of pause, or if I start a box and somebody's in my way, I could pause here, finish it, and then kind of go on. The other thing you can also use it for is starting a dance. So let's say you're together here, you want, you're being very, very casual about it, or formal, doesn't matter. You want to start this waltz, and you can just go one, two, three, one, two, three. Do these balance steps first to kind of get into the music and get comfortable together, and then go to the box step and start to dance away. One more thing I want to note is the size of the step that we're taking. So as followers, we want to follow the size of the step, whatever that may be that the leader gives. He's the one who decides how big of a step or how small of a step he's going to take. Of course, there's ways to make it more comfortable for the follower leaders. So if you're super tall and she's super short, don't take a massive step because that's just a little bit uncomfortable for her. So of course, you can be kind to your follower. but. In an ideal world, we would just follow whatever size of step he gives us. This goes for any type of step, but now that we're doing a simpler step, we can practice it as well. So the forward and back, I would say um, once you get comfortable taking backward steps, is going to be kind of easy. For this side step, what I see oftentimes is where the problem happens with we might take actually a bigger step than he does, and then we go too far past him, and now I'm not on his left side or on his right side off to the left. So I want to make sure for the side steps, any side step I take, that I remain on his right side, okay? So I don't want to drift over and take a step that's too large outside of the frame. So that's an important thing to think about and it's a good way to practice kind of leading and following the size of the steps we wanna take and maintaining that left alignment throughout. It makes it much easier that, that you wait, that the follower is always trying to be late for all these steps. That if she's just staying with her feet together, I go move first, she only moves as much as I move. Same thing here, she waits and then pushes off and takes this step. Now we're always on the same page. If she goes at a second before I do, it's gonna be really tough for her to gauge the size of the step. guys thanks so much for sticking to the end of the video if you liked it be sure to let us know in the comments below give us a thumbs up subscribe for more content and if you enjoyed this type of video and the waltz we have more stuff for you so don't worry up on our website the ball and feed pro section we're gonna link that down below we have more advanced variations things that travel around more more combinations everything like that so be sure to check that out and we'll see you again very soon bye